So today we'll discuss the sequence networks of different power system elements and how to combine them to form the sequence network of the total power system. Okay. So before going to that, I just want to tell one simple point that how this uh, rotating stator flux is formed. So the point is when three phase balanced currents balanced currents which, which these are currents state or currents in three phase balanced currents which are separated in time by 120 degrees when they flow through the balanced stator windings which are separated in space by 120 degrees a rotating magnetic field is produced rotating magnetic field is produced which rotates at synchronous speed which rotates at synchronous speed so when three phase balanced currents these currents are the stator induced currents so we know that the currents are separated so this is how the currents will be so this is ia ia ib and ic so these currents are separated in time by 120 degrees understand when they flow through the windings when they flow through the stator windings if you imagine this as a stator the windings will be separated from one another by 120 degrees okay so in which in between them the rotor will be there suppose this is r phase winding let us call a phase winding b phase winding and c phase winding here these windings are separated in space by 120 degrees spatially they are separated by 120 degrees so when the three phase balanced currents which are separated in time axis by 120 degrees when they flow through the three phase balanced stator windings which are separated in space by 120 degrees what will happen the resultant effect will be there will be a rotating magnetic field which rotates at synchronous speed which rotates at synchronous speed understand now what will is the direction of that stator magnetic field it is decided by the phase sequence of the currents phase sequence of the currents here if you can observe these are positive sequence currents or the the phase sequence of these currents is a b c which is clockwise phase sequence clockwise phase sequence so your magnetic field rotation stator magnetic field rotation stator magnetic field rotation is also clockwise is also clockwise understand see in a phase which current is flowing in a phase winding it is carrying ia current b phase carrying ib c phase carrying ic in this case okay three currents which are separated three currents which are balanced and which are separated in in time they are flowing through three windings which are balanced which are separated spatially by 120 degrees the resultant effect is a rotating magnetic field which rotates at synchronous speed and the direction of rotation is given by the phase sequence of the currents so here they will rotate in the clockwise direction 
clockwise direction understand now second scenario that will arise is suppose if my phase sequence of the currents is negative negative phase sequence so in this case what will happen so what is my current the currents are balanced then magnitude is same but the phase sequence is opposite phase sequence is opposite now this current is i'm sorry this current is ic this current is ib now what is the phase sequence acb negative phase sequence so negative phase sequence it is acb now when i pass negative phase sequence currents through the balanced windings through the balanced windings then what will happen suppose this current is ic this current is ib okay so now what will happen these these currents the, the currents that are flowing through the balanced stator windings are negative phase sequence then the rotating magnetic field that is produced which rotates in the anti clockwise direction which rotates in the anti clockwise direction okay so what you have to remember if if positive sequence currents flow through the stator windings the rotating magnetic field direction is clockwise clockwise which is same as the main field uh, which is same as the main field magnetic field direction but when negative sequence currents flow the rotation of the stator magnetic field is anti clockwise which is opposite to main field flux rotation because whatever may be this one our rotor will be rotating in our rotor will be rotating in which direction clockwise direction only so since our rotor rotation is clockwise our main field direction main field or main field direction is always clockwise direction is clockwise understand so this one important point which you have to remember to understand the effect of how the positive sequence currents will uh, will affect and how the negative sequence currents will affect the third important point is when zero sequence currents flow through the stator windings when zero sequence currents flow through the stator windings suppose what is the zero sequence currents they are having same magnitude and same phase ia not ib not ic not so it is simply like that the same current is flowing through all three windings which are separated in which are separated in space by 120 degrees then the resultant magnetic field what will happen the resultant magnetic field will become zero why because the three currents are passing through three windings the same current same magnitude and same phase currents so this zero sequence currents are having same phase and same magnitude when they pass through three windings three windings which are separated in space by 120 degrees the resultant magnetic field is zero there because if you add any three components here you are adding all three voltage uh, all three voltage drops which are separated by 120 degrees so it will become x at an angle 0 plus x at an angle minus 120 plus x at an angle 120 so the resultant effect will be zero so resultant magnetic field the resultant magnetic field when you pass zero sequence currents through the stator windings is zero is zero so only three important points when positive sequence current flow the rotating magnetic field is produced whose direction is clockwise same as main field flux direction okay when negative sequence currents are uh, flow through the stator windings a rotating magnetic field is produced which is opposite to the main field flux when zero sequence currents passes there is no stator magnetic field there is no stator magnetic field understand now with this background if you go to the sequence networks of synchronous machine sequence network of synchronous machine understand now the first point is if the direction of rotation of stator flux if the direction of rotation of stator flux is same as is same as the direction of rotation of rotor flux the corresponding components of the synchronous machine 
the corresponding components of the synchronous machine that are induced voltages, currents, impedances, all are called positive sequence components. All are called positive sequence components. And if the direction of rotation of stator flux and direction of rotation of rotor flux both are same, both are rotating in clockwise direction at synchronous speed, at synchronous speed, the corresponding components in the synchronous machine that is induced voltages, currents, impedances, voltage drops, everything is called positive sequence components, positive sequence components. The second important point is the EMFs are induced only in the positive sequence network. That is second important point is induced EMFs induced EMFs are present only in only in positive sequence networks positive sequence networks understand this er e by eb they are present only in the positive sequence networks okay now so this is we always use abc why because every international textbook uses abc only only in india we call ryb so this induced voltage is ea1 ea uh, eb1 ec1 understand let this impedance called zg1 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 okay the currents flowing so i am only considering the alternator which is carrying positive sequence currents ia1 ib1 ic1 so again remaining system i am not drawing here the voltages induced are ea1 eb1 ec1 are the positive sequence induced voltages zg1 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 is the zg1 is the positive sequence impedance of synchronous machine positive sequence impedance of synchronous machine where ea1 eb1 and ec1 are the positive sequence induced voltages induced voltages and ia1 ib1 ic1 are the positive sequence currents positive sequence currents understand so when system carries only positive sequence components yesterday we have seen the positive sequence currents will flow through the conductors and they return through the conductor and they are balanced and they are balanced so the neutral voltage the neutral voltage here is zero and all the neutral grounding impedances we can neglect all the neutral grounding impedances can be neglected so when you consider only positive sequence currents flowing in the system your neutral voltage is zero ground voltage is also zero so so all neutral grounding impedances neutral grounding impedances can be neglected can be neglected understand so while drawing the positive sequence network our neutral and ground voltages are zero so neutral grounding impedances can be neglected understand okay now this is the three phase version of the positive sequence network if you draw the per phase positive sequence network it will be like this here you can see the reference for the positive sequence network can be either neutral or ground why because both are at a same potential okay so if you draw the per phase equivalent of the positive sequence network you are going to get so i am only drawing per phase per phase means very simple you take only the reference phase, A phase, and you draw it. So it will become how much? It will be just like this. So there is one induced EMF, which we call it as A1. 
this is the phase conductor this is the neutral conductor or ground because both are at same potential so reference is either neutral or ground then you have the positive sequence impedance then you have the terminal voltage let us call this as uh, va1 and you have which current flowing positive sequence currents ia1 okay so this is positive sequence impedance of synchronous machine zg1 so this is the this diagram is the per phase positive sequence network of the synchronous machine per phase positive sequence network of the synchronous machine if you write in the form of equation so va1 will become how much va1 is equals to ea1 minus ia1 into zg1 so this is the positive sequence network of the synchronous machine understand so you just only have to remember this diagram what is the positive sequence network of the synchronous machine suppose in case of motor what will happen in case of motor it will simply become the direction of current will reverse and here instead of ea1 generator voltage you will get motor back emf motor back emf okay that is the only difference here in case of a synchronous motor what will happen the direction of current will reverse the direction of current will reverse your ea1 will become em1 induced voltage inside the induced back emf inside the machine so your equation it will become va1 va1 it will become va1 is equals to ea1 plus sorry em1 em1 plus ia1 zg1 why because the current direction has changed so instead of minus of minus it will become plus okay in motor terminal voltage will be greater than the induced back emf inside this one everything else is same but you very rarely encounter the synchronous motors understand next negative sequence network negative sequence network if the direction of rotation of stator flux and rotor flux are opposite if the direction of rotation of stator flux and rotor flux are opposite then the corresponding components are called a negative sequence components then the corresponding components are called negative sequence components okay so there are no negative sequence induced emfs so in negative sequence network there are no induced emfs only positive sequence network contains induced emfs okay next the stator flux produced by negative sequence currents rotates in opposite direction to the rotor or main field flux at synchronous speed at synchronous speed so because one is rotating here you have seen so this when negative sequence current flows this is rotating at synchronous speed in opposite direction but the main field flux is rotating in clockwise direction at synchronous speed so between the stator flux and the rotor flux what is the relative speed what is the relative speed when the stator windings are carrying negative sequence currents it is two times ns because one is flowing in ns in clockwise direction other is flowing with the ns speed in anti clockwise direction so the relative speed will become 2 ns understand so the relative speed between the rotor flux and stator flux becomes because of negative sequence currents it will become 2 ns okay now this negative sequence flux cuts the rotor windings not stator windings cuts the rotor windings and it induces eddy current induces eddy currents of 100 hertz frequency which will overheat and damage the rotor of synchronous machine which will overheat and damage the rotor of synchronous machine okay so because when the negative sequence currents flow through the stator winding the stator flux is rotating opposite to main field flux so the relative speed between them is 2 ns so two times the synchronous speed so 
this negative sequence stator flux will cut the rotor windings because a rotor is also rotating in the clockwise direction but this negative sequence flux because of the stator currents is rotating in anti clockwise direction so there is a relative speed of 2ns between the rotor conductor rotor conductor and a stator magnetic field so according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction some voltage and some eddy currents are induced in rotor winding so the frequency of this induced currents is 100 hertz which these induced currents will overheat and damage the rotor of synchronous machine will overheat and damage the rotor of synchronous machine so to 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 prevent this operation to prevent this operation here this point is important to prevent this we use a relay called negative sequence relay to prevent this we use a relay called negative sequence relay which will trip the alternator when the negative sequence currents flowing through stator windings exceeds a threshold limit okay so why this effect is caused because of the flowing of negative sequence currents through the stator windings so whenever the negative sequence currents flow through the stator windings beyond a limit then what will happen it they will damage the rotor by inducing eddy currents and overheating it so to prevent this damage of rotor we use a relay called a negative sequence relay which senses this negative sequence currents and if they exceed certain limit the generator this negative sequence relay will trip the generator so the our generator is safeguarded so only remember this point where negative sequence relay is used negative sequence relay is used in alternator in alternator why it is used to prevent the overheating of the to prevent the damage of the rotor because of overheating by the induced eddy currents very very important objective question okay now that is the story of the negative sequence uh, currents what the, what the impact now if you draw the negative sequence network in the similar lines again i am drawing the same network here there are no negative sequence induced voltages because voltages are induced only because of positive sequence currents uh, positive sequence effect so here also the neutral voltage is zero and i draw the remaining currents so this is zg2 negative sequence impedance zg2 zg2 ia2 ic2 so they are carrying currents of ia2 see the sequence is opposite ia2 ic2 and ib2 here there are no induced emfs so what you are going to get even the negative sequence currents are also balanced we know negative sequence currents are balanced but they have opposite phase sequence so when balanced currents even negative sequence currents flow through the conductors and return through the conductor so the at neutral points the sum of all three negative sequence currents is zero so neutral current is zero and neutral voltage is also zero when the system carries only negative sequence currents so our neutral voltage is zero our neutral voltage is zero now here again i am telling zg2 is the negative sequence impedance zg2 is negative sequence impedance of impedance of synchronous machine synchronous machine okay now if you draw the per phase equivalent of the negative sequence network if i draw the per phase equivalent of negative sequence network only i am drawing the per phase so it will be very simple one impedance again this is between phase and neutral because neutral and ground are at same potential even for negative sequence network this is zg2 this voltage we are calling it as va2 this current is ia2 so you are going to get va2 is equals to induced emf is 0 minus ia2 zg2 so this is the negative sequence network of the synchronous machine negative sequence network of the synchronous machine va2 is equals to you simply have to represent the negative sequence network in this form 
okay next last zero sequence network if zero sequence currents are passed through stator windings the resultant stator flux is zero the resultant stator flux is zero understand so there are no zero sequence induced emfs in the stator of the generator there are no just like negative sequence that even there are no zero sequence induced emfs in the stator of the generator okay so now what happens if you draw the zero sequence network of a synchronous machine this is zg not zg not zg not zero sequence impedance of the synchronous machine these are zero sequence currents that is i a not i b not i c not okay now zero sequence currents we know that they flow through the conductors and they return through the ground so let us assume this is the return path the zero sequence currents uh, which you have which are flowing they are returning through the ground 3 ia not why you are writing 3 ia not sir so the neutral current in this case will become how much suppose if there is a load here virtually i am drawing suppose this is my system okay these are connected like this so all three currents will add up together because they are in same phase sequence they are not separated by 120 degrees so the resultant current will be how much the resultant current here at this point is 3 ia not that is ia not plus ib not plus ic not since three are equals i am writing 3 ia not so the same currents will return in this fashion in this fashion okay so the zero sequence currents will pass through the conductors and they return through the gr ground so already we have discussed for zero sequence currents to flow for zero sequence currents to flow there must be a closed return path through the ground there must be a closed return path through the ground suppose if zn is the zn is the neutral grounding impedance that is the impedance connected between neutral point and ground then this zn carries which currents this zn carries the currents of 3 ia not 3 ia not so here your neutral voltage will become 3 ia not into zn 3 ia not into zn okay so in zero sequence network there are no induced emfs Z, uh, no induced emfs zg not is the zero sequence zg not is the zero sequence impedance of synchronous machine zero sequence impedance of synchronous machine okay we know that ia not ib not ic not are the three zero sequence currents so these they pass through the conductors and if they have closed return path through ground they return through the ground this is how they flow in the system now if you draw the per phase equivalent diagram for the zero sequence network here you have to very carefully observe i have to draw between phase and ground why because now neutral voltage is not equal to zero so reference reference for zero sequence network zero sequence network is ground is ground why because neutral voltage is not equals to voltage of ground so your reference will become ground whereas for positive and negative sequence currents positive and negative sequence networks the neutral point and ground point are at same potential so you can take either neutral or ground as the reference but for zero sequence network the, the reference is absolute ground so if you draw the per phase diagram how you have to draw you have to draw between the phase and ground phase and ground so how you can draw you, you see this i am um, uh, just for space constraint so this will become this 
like this. Okay, three Z N into Z G naught. This is I A naught. This is V A naught. Why you are writing three Z N, sir? Because what is the current flowing through the neutral three I A naught? But what is the current flowing through the phase impedance I A naught? So I cannot have two different currents in a series circuit. For that, what I am doing, rather than three I A naught, I am writing I A naught flowing through three Z N. Rather than writing three A A naught flowing through Z N, what I am doing, I am writing I A naught flowing through three Z N. So then the circuit will uh, will be series and the same current will be flowing through the circuit. So here. This is the absolute phase. Uh, this is absolute phase. This is phase, and this is ground. This is ground. So, what is the voltage difference between these two? V A naught becomes there are no induced EMFs, so it is zero minus I A naught into Z G naught plus three Z N. Z G naught plus Zn. So this is the zero sequence network of the synchronous machine. So you have to remember this one equation and this network. Okay. So this is about the sequence networks of synchronous machines. Positive sequence network means you have to remember this portion. Sorry, here I think this is the positive sequence network. Okay, where there are the induced EMFs and positive sequence impedance. Where V A one is equals to E A one minus I A one dot G one. Negative sequence network means this network where the induced M F is zero, and you have this equation, and this is the zero sequence network of the synchronous machine. One important note: see when the power system is balanced, as we know. There are no negative sequence and there are no zero sequence components. Only positive sequence components are there. So that point also we have discussed. Now you see the first note. The positive sequence components are present before the fault because the power system is balanced. So before the fault, only positive sequence components are present. Even during the fault, the positive sequence components are present. And after clearing the fault, even after after you clear the fault, again power system will become balanced. After clearing the fault, also the positive sequence components are present. So the components which are present all the time, they are positive sequence components. So all your relays, over current relays, impedance relays, over voltage relays, under voltage relays, all the relays they operate on only positive sequence components. The relay settings and the relay operation is based only on the positive sequence components because they are present all the time okay only for the operation of negative sequence relay we use negative it only operates on the negative sequence components negative sequence relay operates on the negative sequence components and earth fault protection earth fault protection or ground fault protection it is completely based on zero sequence components why because most of the earth fault relays are connected in the neutral In the neutral between the neut uh, neutral and ground of the transformer or generator, so the neutral carries only zero sequence components. So earth fault or ground fault protection is completely based on zero sequence components. Remember this important notes. Okay. So what is this ZG one? What are the positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence impedance of the synchronous machine? I want to discuss. Okay. So we already know the positive sequence impedances are Z G one is equals to J. Synchronous machine has three different impedances: J X T double dash for the first cycle. J X T dash for two to five cycles after occurrence of fault, and it is equals to J X D in steady state. So this is the positive sequence impedance. We have discussed them. How this will come? Everything we have discussed. This is 
J exit subtransient reactants for first cycle, transient reactants for two to five cycles after fault, and after that it is steady state after five cycles. Okay, for cylindrical rotor machines, your ZG two and ZG one are same, same as the this one. So there is no difference between the positive and negative sequence impedance in case of cylindrical rotor machines. Your ZG not, ZG not is simple. Leakage reactants only leakage reactants for cylindrical rotor machines. Leakage reactants. Okay, ninety nine point nine nine percent in power systems we deal with synchronous cylindrical rotor machines only. I have already told you. Suppose if they ask for salient pole, salient pole, these values will become. For salient poles also, this positive sequence impedance is same. Positive sequence impedance is same as that of the cylindrical rotor machine. But however, there is a difference in negative sequence impedance. This value will become Z G two will become J into X T double dash plus X Q double dash by two. One is the direct axis, and other is the quadrature axis. Okay, that that is the for first cycle. This one is the for first cycle. For two to five cycles, it will become x t dash plus x q dash divided by two. In steady state, this value will become x d plus x q divided by two. Okay, this is for two to five cycles, same as. Above and this is in steady state. Just for remembrance, if somewhere some objective questions are, you should have this knowledge. That's why I'm telling. Okay. Next, even Z G naught is equals to leakage reactants. Z G naught is equals to leakage reactants for salient pole machines. Okay. So what you have to remember here is for cylindrical rotor machines, Z G one is equals to Zg two. These values are very much greater than Zg naught. Why? Because it is a combination of leakage and armature reactants. Here Zg naught is only leakage reactants. Whereas in salient pole machine, Zg one is slightly greater than Zg two, and these values are much greater than the Zg naught. This is for salient pole synchronous machines. Understand? Remember this. In some context, if some objective question comes, you can answer it. Okay. I hope you know that the, these uh, salient pole machines have two axes. One is direct axis, and other is quadrature axis. More to a transformer is a static device. It offers the same impedance for the flow of positive, negative, and zero sequence currents. However. the total zero sequence impedance of transformer depends upon the type of connection and the nature of grounding on the start side since it is a static device there is no difference whether positive sequence current flow negative sequence current flow or zero sequence current flow the machine will offer same impedance for the flow of currents but however the total zero sequence impedance of transformer depends upon what is the type of connection of transformer and how the star connected side is grounded whether it is grounded solidly grounded grounded to resistant this all will matter for the zero sequence currents why because zero sequence currents will flow through the neutral they return through the ground that's why this this aspect is important now the zero sequence network of a transformer is like this it is same for positive and negative this value is X, we are writing. Let us call it as X T one positive sequence. X T one. This value is okay. V A one, V A one dash. The current is I A one. This is phase and this is neutral for positive sequence network. The reference is neutral or ground. Even for negative sequence network, also, it is exactly same. 
x t two, both of them will be equal. V a two, V a two dash, and the current is a a two. Okay, so this is phase. This is neutral. Understand? So this is positive sequence network. This is negative sequence network of transformer. We're already here. X T one is equals to X T two. Sir, what value we have to consider? We already know this is equivalent impedance of transformer. Equivalent per unit impedance of transformer, which we have already calculated in per unit system. Z equivalent per unit impedance. Which is same either you calculate on HT side or LT side. The per unit equivalent impedance of transformer is say that impedance only you are taking it as XT1 and XT2. There is no difference between the positive and negative sequence networks. Okay, but however the zero sequence network depends upon the type of transformer connection and a nature in which the star side is grounded. Okay, now. to represent the zero sequence network of transformer a switch circuit is used to represent a zero sequence network of a transformer a switch circuit is used where 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 
let us take star grounded and star grounded how it is grounded it is solidly grounded it is grounded with the zero impedance now if you draw the zero sequence network for this one so this is xt not this is this one so there are two four switches now tell me primary side how it is connected it is connected in star and it is grounded both conditions are satisfied so we have to close this with three times the three times the impedance between the star point and ground what is the three times impedance zero so we have to close the series switch with uh, three times the zero impedance so i am closing this with three times zero impedance okay again how secondary side is connected you don't touch the delta one shunt switch you have to leave it open you don't have to do anything with the shunt switch secondary side is also star connected and grounded so again the series switch i am closing with uh, three times the zero impedance so this is the this is the zero sequence network this is a ground this is the ground this is the zero sequence network of a star star transformer star star transformer okay understood now suppose secondary side is only star connected but not anything so again you have to keep the both shunt switch and series switch open why because this particular sec secondary side is not delta connected so you do, you should not touch the shunt switch secondary side is star connected only half condition is satisfied but it is not grounded so you have to leave the even the series switch open you have to leave the series switch open understand so this is for the second example okay suppose even this side is star side is not connected then what will happen even this both the series and both shunt switches will be open in this case in this case so let us take the fourth case where this is star connected but this is grounded but grounded with some impedance called zn it is grounded with some impedance zn now you see primary side is star ungrounded so in primary side both shunt and series which are open in secondary side it is star connected and grounded but it is grounded with an impedance of zn so you have to close this switch with uh, three times the three times that impedance three times zn so this will be the equivalent zero sequence network for the this type of connection this type of connection suppose even here there is some impedance of say zn dash then it will become what here also you have to close the series switch with three times the impedance that is three times zn dash three times zn dash okay so this is about star all possible connection now if you go for a delta suppose both sides are delta suppose both sides are delta then what will be your zero sequence network of the transformer so both sides you have to close the shunt switches so this is xt not so this is the both sides the shunt switches are closed this is the zero b why because so if a particular side is delta you have to close the shunt switch so both sides we have closed the shunt switches so this is the zero sequence network of delta delta transformer suppose particular side is secondary side is star connected and grounded this side is star connected and grounded through some resistance say rn then what it will become primary side is shunt closed the secondary side will become how much the secondary side should be closed with uh, three times this resistance three times rn so this is the zero sequence network for this combination for this combination likewise you can draw for any combination you can draw the zero sequence network of the transformer zero sequence network of the transformer understood okay next the last is zero sequence network of the transmission line zero sequence network of the transmission line okay so 
let us consider a three phase transposed transmission line let us consider a three phase transposed transmission line carrying unbalanced currents carrying unbalanced currents let the unbalanced currents be ia ib and ic these three are the unbalanced currents flowing because system is under unbalance then i am drawing the network yes Okay, yeah so these are three conductors xs is the self inductance or the self reactance of the each transmission and i'll tell you what is self reactance why we have kept dots everything so this current let us call it as ia ib ic okay so this is va this will be vb and this is vc okay this is va dash vb dash and vc dash okay this is ground oh now we have one more thing the mutual inductance between any two lines is jxm the mutual inductance between any two lines is jxm okay even between line 1 and line 3 there is a mutual inductance of jxm okay now current entering terminal is marked with dot current entering terminal is marked with dot okay so here i am writing what i have discussed va vb vc are sending end voltages sending end voltages of transmission line okay va dash vb dash comma vc dash or receiving end voltages receiving end voltages and of course we know ia ib ic are the unbalanced currents xs is the self reactance self reactance of each phase conductor that is r phase self reactance y phase self reactance like that xm is the mutual reactance mutual reactance between any two phase conductors any two phase conductors okay now here if you calculate the voltage drop between these three phase conductors you are going to get a set of equations you are going to get a set of equations here you have to include the self reactance as well as mutual reactance sir why this concept of mutual reactance is coming before that we had only one transmission line impedance but now you are telling mutual uh, two things two different things see when the power system is balanced blindly remember let us not go deep derivations and analysis why it will come when the power system is balanced there is no mutual coupling between the three transmission lines there is no mutual coupling between r phase y phase y phase b phase and b phase r phase there is no concept of mutual coupling and mutual reactance so when the power system is balanced you are simply taking you are simply taking the self reactance of the transmission line you are simply taking the self reactance of the transmission line okay the point is when power system is balanced and transmission line transmission line 
is transposed both condition must be satisfied when the power system is balanced and transmission line is transposed there are no mutual there is no there is no mutual coupling mutual coupling means magnetic coupling between any two transmission conductors any two transmission conductors so in this case the mutual reactance term will become zero mutual reactance term will become zero so all the transmission lines are represented only by self reactance all the transmission lines are represented by only self reactants understand so xs minus sorry xs understand axs xs jxs 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 this is the reactants of the transmission line for conductor a b and c however when the power system becomes unbalanced because now they are carrying the unbalanced currents the magnetic fields of this conductor is different from the magnetic field of this conductor and the magnetic field of this conductor why because any current carrying conductor will produce a magnetic field when all these three are carrying the balanced currents then the resultant magnetic field the resultant magnetic field is becoming zero but however when they are carrying unbalanced currents there is a net resultant magnetic field around the conductors which will induce mutual which will have mutual inductance between the two transmission conductor that's why xm is coming okay now how to include this one suppose if suppose if here the current is entering here here also current is entering here so what dot convention says and suppose they are having a mutual reactance of xm currents will enter in the two coupled coils suppose this is a i'm trying to explain dot convention so this is one coil this is one more coil the dots are like this let us say the dots are like this so current entering at the dotted terminal of the first coil current entering at the dotted terminal of the first coil will induce a mutual voltage will induce a mutual voltage with the positive polarity with the positive polarity at the dotted terminal of the second coil at the dotted terminal of the second coil so suppose the mutual inductance value is m between them this is l1 and this is l2 so the mutually induced voltage will become m into d i1 by d2 this mutually induced voltage will have positive polarity at the dotted terminal of the second coil okay likewise likewise here suppose the current entering here is say let us say i2 suppose here there is no current it is open circuit then what will be the mutually mutually induced voltage here the in the second coil the current is entering at the dotted terminal so it will induce the with the positive polarity at the dotted coil of the at the dotted terminal of the second coil so here the positive uh, mutual induced voltage will become m into d i2 by dt d i2 by dt understand suppose both are having both are having the currents i1 and i2 entering here and the dots are like this suppose this is v1 the first coil this is v2 now tell me what is the total voltage v1 first is the self induced emf self induced emf is uh, sorry i have written here a current i1 so the total voltage v1 will be, become it is sum of self induced voltage and mutually induced voltage so what is the self induced voltage v1 is equals to l1 into di1 by dt voltage due to its own current its own current that is self induced emf what is mutual induced to see the polarity of the self induced emf is like this this is current entering terminal is positive current leaving terminal is negative again what is the polarity of the mutual voltage the polarity of mutual voltage here the current is entering at the dotted terminal here the current is entering at the dotted terminal so the mutual voltage will have again the positive polarity at the dotted terminal of this one so this is the 
the blue marks are the polarity of the mutual voltage so both are aiding self induced emf and mutual induced emf both are aiding so it will become m into di2 by dt m into di2 by dt so this is the v1 again v2 will become so v2 will become what is the voltage due to self induced emf that is l2 into l2 into di2 by dt excellent someone is following very good next what is because of the mutual voltage m into di1 by dt both are additive both are additive because i1 current is here is entering at the positive uh, dotted terminal so it will have positive polarity at the dotted terminal so it is m into di1 i1 by dt very good understand so this is the dot uh, dot convention even the same condition is valid for undotted terminals if the current is entering at the undotted terminal of first coil then it will induce the mutual induced emf with the positive polarity at the undotted terminal okay let us not go that deep and discuss this one now here if you understand here all the currents are entering in all three phases are entering because of the at the dotted terminals only at the dotted terminals only so all the couplings will be aiding only all the couplings will be aiding so if you compute the voltage drop in this case let us compute the so to make our life easy yeah gentlemen you just forgive me it is ic it is ib it is ia why because we have drawn like that now va minus va dash will become how much tell me va minus va dash will become the first is the drop due to self reactance that is what is the current flowing through that one ia into uh, we'll write this like this jx is into ia jx is into ia voltage drop due to its own reactance now one more is the voltage drop due to mutually mutual reactance between ib and ia it will become what plus jxm into ib and because of the mutual reactance between conductor c and conductor a it will become jxm into ic is this first term corresponds to self reactance drop okay the second term corresponds to mutual reactance drop between conductor a and conductor b the third term corresponds to mutual reactance drop between conductor a and conductor c okay sir why all the mutual reactants are same because it is a transposed line it is a transposed line every conductor will occupy all three positions over the complete length so the mutual reactances will become same vb minus vb dash tell me what it will be jxm ia very good jxm ia, IA. This is J X S I B. J X S I B. Plus J X M I C. J X M I C. Very good. Very good. Very good. So V C minus V C dash likewise will become J X M I A. J X M I A. Plus J X S J X M I B. J X M I B. Plus J X S I C. so these are the voltage drops because of the self and mutual reactances in all three transmission line in all three transmissions okay very good so if, we, if we write them in in the form of a matrix what i am going to get va minus va dash vb minus vb dash vc minus vc dash is going to become i am taking j common outside it will become xs xm 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 xs xm 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 xs into the unbalanced currents that are ia ib ic understand so here the first vector it is a vector of unbalanced voltage drops 
this is a vector of unbalanced voltage drops unbalanced voltage drops okay this is the transformation matrix and these are unbalanced currents flowing in the system so from the initial transformation for, from the first class what you have learned how you can write the original unbalanced components is equals to the transformation matrix z into sequence components sequence components so any unbalanced any unbalanced phasors i can write it as the original transformation matrix z into the sequence components of the same phasors okay if i do the same transformation on both sides how i can write this one i can write this one as One 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 alpha square alpha 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 square into now this we have to write it as sequence components V A naught minus V A naught dash V A one minus V A one dash V A two minus V A two dash is equals to that means original unbalanced components I am writing it as the matrix z into the sequence components that is equals to j into same thing will repeat xs xm 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 xs xm 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 xs now again i am writing the unbalanced currents as this one the matrix z into 1 1 1 1 1 alpha square alpha 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 square into the sequence currents that is a a naught a a one a a two okay now we are trying to hunt for the sequence impedances of the transmission line so that is equals to sequence voltages into something into sequence currents so if i if i send this particular jet to this side this is z this is z sorry this is not z let us call this matrix as a this is z these are the sequence currents and these are sequence voltages so i can write this one as i can write this component as directly i am writing va not minus va not dash va1 minus va1 dash VA two minus VA two dash is equals to this Z. If I send this one, it will become Z inverse A Z Z inverse A Z into A A naught A A one A A two Z inverse A Z into this one. If you know matrix algebra very good, any mat any non singular matrix non singular matrix means whose determinant is non zero any non singular matrix suppose a is a non singular matrix if you pre multiply with one inverse and post multiply with the, the original matrix you are going to get the eigen values of the matrix here you are going to get the eigen values of matrix a so let us not go that deep into mathematics so the resultant will become the resultant will become don't worry about the derivation nobody will ask it va not minus va not dash va1 minus va1 dash va2 minus va2 dash if you simplify that matrix you are going to get a rectangular matrix again j will be there xs plus 2xm 0 0 Zero x s minus x m zero 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 x s minus x m multiplied by the currents a a naught a a one a a two understand so this is the zero sequence voltage voltage drops this is the zero sequence impedance. 
So this is the zero sequence voltage drop. This is the zero sequence impedance, and this is the zero sequence current. Understand? Likewise, this is positive sequence voltage drop, positive sequence impedance, positive sequence current. Negative sequence voltage drop, negative sequence impedance, negative sequence current. So the positive, negative, and zero sequence networks of transmission line will become will become. So first, I'm drawing the zero sequence. This one. So this is V A naught. This is V A naught dash. This is I A naught, and this value is X S plus two X M. Some textbook will write Z S. You simply write Z S plus two Z M. But mostly we neglect the resistance. All will be reactances. Here it is a phase conductor. This is a ground. Why the zero sequence network? The reference is ground. Okay, this is the zero sequence network. Positive and negative sequence network. I am drawing. VA one, VA one dash. This is the XS minus XM. This is IA one. Here it is a phase conductor. This is neutral or ground because for positive sequence network the reference is either neutral or ground. The third one is. Xs minus Xm. This is VA two. VA two dash. This is IA two. So again, the reference is either neutral or ground. Why? Because negative sequence network also reference is ground. So these are the zero positive and negative sequence networks of the transmission line. This is zero sequence network. This is positive sequence network, and this is negative sequence network of the transmission line. Okay, so zero sequence impedance is X S plus two X M. Positive is X S minus X M. Negative is X S plus two X M. Understand? First doubt is, sir, why the positive and negative sequence reactance of the transmission line are smaller? Why the zero sequence impedance are bigger? First question that should come. Why? Because the main point is the transmission line will have longer span. That means their length will be few hundreds of kilometers. So, whereas my positive sequence currents go through the transmission line and they return through the transmission line, both positive sequence currents and negative sequence currents. Whereas my zero sequence currents. They flow through the transmission line in forward direction and they return through the ground. They return through the ground. Okay, the ground impedance will not be constant. It will be continuously changing. Why? Because three hundred kilometer ground, if you say somewhere it will be river, somewhere it will be moist soil, somewhere it will be black soil, somewhere it will be sand, somewhere it will be desert, somewhere it will be red soil. So the soil resistivity. For the zero sequence currents returning is not constant. The return ground path will offer variable resistance. Why? Because the span of transmission line is more. So, when compared to transmission conductors, the resistance of ground is more because conductors are having very more conductivity than the conductivity of ground. So, resistance of the ground is more when compared to the resistance of the uh, copper or aluminium conductor. That's why the zero sequence impedance is more for a transmission line when compared to other. So why not this? This is same valid for transformers. Transformers, how much length will be there? The complete, even if you take a biggest of biggest transformer, the length will be maximum ten meters. Maximum ten meters area the transformer can be established. So the ten meter resistance of the ground is negligible, nothing. So we don't consider. Our XT1, XT2, and XT0 are all same, but whereas for transmission line, the zero sequence reactance, uh, zero sequence impedance is more when compared to positive and negative sequence impedance. Why? Because the return path through through ground will have the return path through ground will have different 
kinds of soils which offer different resistance okay now if you look at this one in a transmission line the zero sequence currents flow through the conductor and they return through the ground and they return through the ground the impedance of ground depends upon the type of soil and moisture content okay as a result the zero sequence impedance of transmission line is more and it varies in the range of 2.5 to 3.5 times of its positive and negative sequence impedance suppose if i call this uh, positive sequence impedance as zl not or xl not xl1 is positive sequence impedance xl2 is the negative sequence impedance which is xs minus xm which is same the xl not will be it is in the range of 2.5 to 3.5 times your xl1 or xl2 so approximately we take the average of this one so we approximately will take xl not is 3 times xl1 or xl2 understand this is many times an objective question okay so these are the appro these are the exact values if you know xs and xm you can directly calculate but if you know xl1 or xl2 from that also you can directly tell xl0 is three times that of the xl1 or xl2 where xl1 is the positive sequence reactance of transmission line xl2 is the negative sequence impedance of transmission line xl0 is the zero sequence impedance of the transmission so these are the about the sequence networks of transformer transmission line and synchronous machine synchronous machine how to draw the positive negative and zero sequence network of a given power system network of a given power system network understand first while drawing positive sequence network what are the things to remember already you know how to draw the positive sequence networks why because when you have drawn the per unit equivalent per unit impedance diagram from sld whatever you have drawn whatever you have drawn it is the positive sequence network it is the positive sequence network okay while you have drawn the while you have drawn the per unit impedance diagram you are nothing but you have drawn the positive sequence network understand so only one point which you have to remember the reference for positive sequence network is neutral the reference for positive sequence network is neutral and second point is while drawing i'm i'm, I'm writing the points first point the reference for positive and negative sequence networks is neutral or ground why because both neutral and ground are at zero voltage okay second point you have to remember is that no need to consider no need to consider neutral grounding impedances no need to consider neutral grounding impedances okay that is the second point third point third point while drawing positive and negative sequence networks induced emfs are present only in only in positive sequence networks okay so when you remember these three you are positive and negative sequence networks is very simple cake walk okay while drawing zero sequence networks while drawing zero sequence networks
reference is absolute ground reference is ground why because neutral voltage is not equals to ground voltage and and zero sequence networks of transformer and transmission line should be considered okay so these four points are important while drawing the zero sequence networks let us take an example and try to understand how they are drawn okay so this is an example you can see so the power system network and their uh, all the impedances that has been given so if the first there is a generator first there is a generator how this generator is connected this generator is star connected and a neutral is grounded through an impedance of a neutral is grounded through a reactance of 5% 5% means per unit value is 0 0.05 again there is a transformer this transformer is primarily it is in uh, primary side it is connected star and solidly grounded secondary it is delta there is a transmission line where the self reactants and mutual reactants values are given again there is one more transformer the type of connection is given and this is the fault point f is the fault uh, point where the fault occurred here there are two synchronous motors their connection and their values are given okay first we will draw the positive sequence network first we will draw the positive sequence network positive sequence network understand first what is the element is there first the generator is there so how do you model generator a generator as a series combination of voltage source and impedance the reference is either ground or neutral okay next you have what next you have transformer transformer we model it as a series reactance next again a transmission line which is modeled as again series reactance next again one more transformer which is series reactance then you have a bus bar where two motors are connected motors means again in the same as the synchronous generator model so to make this is you let us call them motor m1 and motor m2 so all these ground port points we can join you can join okay just since we are drawing positive sequence network all the voltages we have included induced emfs are present only in the positive sequence network so all the induced voltages either it may be emf of the generator or back emf of motor everything you have to write one at an angle zero so back emf synchronous motor and induced voltage of generator you can write it as one at an angle zero and all the impedances you have to write the positive sequence values only so for generator in the data given zg1 zg2 zg0 value is given so we have to consider zg1 positive sequence impedance which whose value is how much 10% so in per unit value its value will become j0.1 for transformer he has given xt1 xt2 xt3 as 10% so the positive sequence value again is 10% j0.1 for transmission line the data xs and xm are given what is the positive sequence reactance xs minus xs minus xm so this is 15 minus 5 it is 10% so again i am writing in per unit value as j0.1 again for second transformer xt1 xt2 xt3 as 15% so it is in per unit it will become j0.15 the two motors are given xm1 xm2 are 25% so it will become j0.25 only we have to consider xm1 positive sequence impedance of motor so this is the positive sequence network of the synchronous uh, positive sequence network of the power system given so we have co considered the induced emfs and back emfs of synchronous motor 
and all positive sequence reactances we have considered we have neglected the neutral grounding how the neutral point is grounded we are not bothered why because neutral voltage is same as ground voltage okay now the most important point is here it is the fault point f here is the fault point f okay the equivalent impedance the equivalent thevenin's impedance between fault point and reference is very important which we have to calculate so let us call this one as z1 equivalent z1 equivalent is the thevenin's thevenin's positive sequence thevenin's positive sequence impedance thevenin's positive sequence impedance between between fault point and reference fault point and reference so we have to compute the thevenin's positive sequence impedance between fault point and reference this value we are denoting z1 equivalent what is this value so very simple you can calculate if you are good at circuit theory all these impedances are in series that is 0.15 so it will become 0.55 it is in parallel with parallel combination of these two it will become 0.55 in parallel with 0.125 0.55 in parallel with 0.125 if someone calculate and tell me what is the thevenin's equivalent impedance so z1 equivalent will become j 0.0978 per unit j 0.0978 per unit this is how you draw the positive sequence network this is how you draw the positive sequence network and how you compute the equivalent impedance between fault point so here the reference is neutral or ground for drawing negative sequence impedance you need not do anything exactly same network with all voltage sources short circuited the negative sequence network how you have to draw you have to same as positive sequence network but you have to short circuit the induced emfs and back emfs that is the only difference that is the only difference but one thing you you keep in mind before doing that exercise you check whether for synchronous machines for synchronous machines whether zg1 or zg2 are same or not just to check because we know for cylindrical rotor they are same but for salient pole they are different just one time you check whether zg1 and zg2 values are same for all synchronous machines here in this case our zg1 and zg2 values are same so we can directly draw our negative sequence network okay remaining all elements absolutely there is a for transformer transmission line both are same you need not check anything so just for synchronous machines before drawing please ensure whether your positive sequence values are same as the negative sequence values or not here in this case both are same so my negative sequence network becomes i am drawing negative sequence network only difference is that you have to short circuit the voltage sources voltage sources are not present you have transformer transmission line one more transformer fault point <laughs> then you have the two reactances so this is the negative sequence network again the reference is either neutral or ground so all the values same as that of the previous case j0.1 j0.1 transmission line again xs minus xm it is blue same j0.1 j0.15 this is fault point f these are j0.25 why because 
even xm2 is 25% so j0.25 so again if you calculate the equivalent impedance let us call this impedance as z2 equivalent z2 equivalent z2 equivalent is what what we have written in previous case thevenins yeah yeah thevenins thevenins negative sequence impedance thevenins negative sequence impedance between fault point and fault point and reference so again you need not calculate this value because the impedances are same if you calculate you are going to get again 0.097 per unit so this is the negative sequence method only you have to short circuit the voltage sources and just check for synchronous machines whether the positive and negative sequence values are same or not okay the most important is how you handle the zero sequence impedances zero sequence impedances for drawing zero sequence network you have to be very careful here we have to consider the neutral grounding impedances and the reference is ground so here also it is very easy for the individual element you draw the zero sequence network and you interconnect them you interconnect them so zero sequence network okay first for for first generator what is a zero sequence network if you remember for generator the zero sequence network is the reference it is absolute ground it is zg not and 3z if you remember this is my zero sequence network for the synchronous machine three times zn and zg not so here what is zg not 3% so i am writing this as directly j0.03 is my zg not what is 3 zn zn value is here in the problem he has given the neutral grounding impedance value as 5% so three times 5% will become 15% so this value will become j 0.05 so that is 3 zn so with this the zero sequence network of the generator is over next you have to draw the transformer for transformer how is the primary side connected how is the primary side connected primary side is connected in star and grounded so first you draw the zero sequence network of a transformer okay we will close the series and shunt switches as as we know primary side is star connected and solidly grounded so we are closing this series switch with uh, three times zero impedance three times zero impedance secondary side how it is connected it is shunt connected so we are closing the shunt switch and we are keeping the series switch open so this is the what is the xt not value here we had written xt3 it is xt not actually xt not is 10% so it will be j0.1 j0.1 for the transformer again you have transmission line whose impedance value is xs plus 2xm so this value will become xs is 15% plus 10% j0.25 because it is zl not is equals to xs plus 2xm so which is 15% plus 2 into 5% is 25% but this series switch is open there is no interconnection why because shunt switch is closed series switch is open next again what you have you have a transformer again you consider a transformer this transformer both the series switches are closed it is three times the impedance and shunt switches are open okay here the impedances are zero so three times zero three times zero this is the zero sequence network of transformer next you have one feeder where you have three motors 
here what is zn here zn is 0 here zn is infinity because it is open circuited so for the first synchronous motor it will become the reactants xm naught and three times short circuit three times short circuit and for the second one you are going to get xm naught three times open circuit okay so this is three times zn is three times zero it is three times infinity is open circuit whereas xm naught value here is xm naught value here is five percent so j 0 0.05 j0.05 so these are the these are the this is the zero sequence network of the given power system okay so if again i'm writing this is 3 zn of generator this is zg naught zg naught this is the series switch impedance of first transformer shunt switch is shunt this is xt naught this one is xl naught zero sequence impedance of transmission line this is again this value is j 0 0.05 0 0.15 xt naught of second transformer this, these are both series switch impedances this is xm naught of both synchronous motors and these are three dead ends 3 jet 3 jet and 3 jet and suppose okay so little bit difficult if you practice one or two problems it will be very easy okay just you are adding the zero sequence networks of individual element that will become the zero sequence network. now if you calculate between the fault point and reference i don't know where the fault point. fault point is here this is fault point and this is our reference if you calculate the Thevenin impedance, it is called Z naught equivalent. Zero sequence, zero sequence Thevenin's impedance between zero sequence Thevenin's impedance between fault point and reference. Fault point and reference. So, can anyone tell how much is this value? What is this value? See, since here it is an open circuit, you need not consider this portion. Okay. So, the Thevenin's equivalent impedance between this point and this point will become how much? It is Z naught equivalent will become j 0 0.05 alone j 0 0.05 alone why because if you apply some voltage between these two points it has only one closed path it cannot flow this path it is here it is open circuit here it is open circuit it cannot flow in this path here it is open circuit so the current can flow only in this path so the impedance seen by this one is only xm naught so that is equivalent impedance is j 0 0.05 per unit that is the zero sequence thevenin's impedance understood